that with this is the game is ready to be too bright. Right? <laughs> uh, just pull one, please. No, you now it might be too, too dark. Turn too on dark. all the lamps. Right, yeah. Mm -hmm. What you need is that light on. Uh, okay. Yeah. yeah. So it's spooky. This school's teaching these kids that they should want tanks in their streets and they should want drones in their skies. You know, yeah. that 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 I was driving in yeah. if spoons today no way, Fitzwilliam okay. listening to NPR and I was freaking out. All right, so this is the presentation on using your freedom of the press. Uh, this is going to be a little interactive, so you know, when I ask a question, it's not rhetorical. I actually do want answers. When someone says freedom of the press, what do you think of as the press? Gutenberg. <laughs> Gutenberg, okay. I think of the government controlled media. Government controlled media. Uh, specifically, which outlets? News. I mean, uh, television and uh, mostly television and newspapers. Yeah. Television, newspapers. Like, but both, like Fox, you know, CNN, definitely press. Yeah. Uh, there's also books, which you know, I realize they're going out of fashion, but books. Ebooks, newspapers. There's also online. There are a lot of online oh, outlets right. yes. that are, you know, more popular than print publications. I forget which magazine it was that recently announced that they're no longer doing a print magazine. They are only going to be doing their online presence. So online is definitely that's where I get all my news. Yeah, that's where most people get their news. And it's one of the easiest outlets of the press to use. It's very easy to start up your own website. You can go to WordPress, Blogger, or find any various you know, web hosting companies that can set you up with some form of a blog, as it's called. WordPress, I believe, is probably the best that's out there now for that sort of thing. That's actually the format that I use for my website, Free Press Publications. I also publish books. There are a number of outlets that one can use to publish a book. It doesn't require large investments of money. You can find one of these print-on-demand companies. Create Space, in my opinion, is the best of the outlets. They're owned by Amazon, yes, evil, evil Amazon, but it's one of those sort of deal with the devil sort of things because they are the best outlet. They have connections. How yes. do we get to Create Space? Is it like a link on Amazon or CreateSpace.com? Create cool. Yeah. So, because they're a subsidiary of Amazon, if you publish a book through them, you automatically, by well, not automatically, you do have to click a little box to get Amazon listing. You can get Amazon EU listing. You do have to agree to the terms and conditions, which are basically saying that I am not violating anyone's copyright, whether you agree with copyright or not. The vast majority of the books that I published have been under a Creative Commons license or are things that are in the public domain. There was one author that I published that did request a copyright. I begrudgingly agreed to that just because that's what he wanted. So, you know, put it out that way. But all of the other books that I put out are either under Creative Commons or public domains. So you can do that. And ebooks are very easy to put out. Uh, it's not necessarily easy to create it in the file format that is required, but there are programs you can download, Scribus being one of them. Uh, Scribus is actually not entirely user friendly in my experience, no. but. If you work with it enough, you get used to it, and then I guess the Stockholm Syndrome kicks in, and then you're like, oh yeah, this is a good program. Uh, I generally use Open Office for all of my formatting, whether it be an ebook, a physical book, or even the newspaper that I publish. And 
and it's not as difficult to publish a newspaper as one might think. Pretty much everybody here lives somewhere relatively nearby a newspaper that gets published either daily, weekly, or you know, some other variant of that. Most of those newspaper companies own a print shop where they you know, do commercial print jobs. Because how else are you going to make money you know, selling a paper for 75 cents? You're not making money that way. You're making money from your advertisers and from commercial print jobs. So call up one of your local newspapers and ask them, how much does it cost for a commercial job? And I forget the specific dimensions. I think it's 10 and a half by 10 and a quarter is the size paper that I had put out, which is actually an odd size for what they do. And it's the smallest size that they do. So the 2,000 copies that I get printed up every month cost $250. Not a huge investment. Not exactly cheap, but also not a huge investment, especially if you can distribute that around some advertisers or what some people have done in the past. There was the New Hampshire Free Press, and Jack had told me that the people that ran that actually gave a speech at one of the first alt expos. What they would do is sell space to people from various towns. So there would be the free Keen page of the NH Free Press. So Keen would invest $50 into the printing of the paper. There would be the Free Coast section of the paper and they would go in on the printing. And so everybody pitched in a little bit and you know, what was the saying, you know, many hands make for light work. So it spreads out the cost and then no one's really investing a large amount of money. And the newspaper that I put out, I actually put out online in the PDF form, the printable PDF form, so that anybody anywhere in the world could download the PDF, go to their local print shop, and you've got a ready-made paper that you don't have to do anything to. And give it to the print shop, they can print it for you. There's also audio and video that's the press. You mentioned news, like television news. There's radio, radio news. And then now there's more and more online outlets. There's the Next News Network, the Ron Paul Channel, both of those using video. I believe Ben Swan is starting up some kind of online video presence. Unfortunately, he's not going to be able to attend the Liberty Forum because his flight was canceled. Uh, so he's not going to be able to present whatever it was that he was going to talk about. But video, the main outlet for putting out video independently online is... YouTube. Yes. yes. YouTube. There's also Vimeo and a couple others that I forget. LiveLeak is another one, but I'm not sure if LiveLeak is as user generated or if they hand pick what they put on their website, but those are both outlets. And with audio, there are at least four Liberty Audio Networks that I am aware of. There's LRN.FM, which is probably the oldest that is out there. Daily Paul Radio has a web stream. I believe they're doing 12 hours of live content a day. There's Liberty Movement Radio and Freedom Phalanx Radio. All four of those networks run my weekly radio show and at least two of them, I haven't confirmed with the other two, but at least two of them are carrying my daily five-minute newscast. You look like you have a question. I have a couple. Go ahead. Um, where, what, what do you broadcast and what, where, are you, where is it from? Uh, the daily five-minute newscast I record now that you know, I'm not in the regular studio that I use to record. I'm using the setup down in the basement from LRN, but I generally record my stuff in the LRN studio. 
and I post all of my archives to both SoundCloud and Spreaker. Those are two of the better uh, online audio archiving websites that are available. Spreaker? Spreaker, it's like speaker with an R after the P. Okay. S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R. Uh, there's also Podomatic, which has been around for a while, but some of their technologies haven't really upgraded with the times. So in my opinion, SoundCloud and Spreaker are the best. Spreaker actually gives you connections to iHeartRadio, which I'm not sure if anybody here is familiar with iHeartRadio. It's an online app or an Android smartphone app. You can download and I can pull it up right now. And it gives you access to hundreds of radio stations. It gives you access to create your own music channel sort of thing so you can put in like your preferences of select an artist or two and I want artists that are similar to this and then you can say I like this song and it will say we will play you more songs that are like this. There's also a lot of newsy type shows that are available and there are currently four Liberty shows that are available on iHeartRadio. Free Talk Live being by far the most popular and you know most quote unquote mainstream of the Liberty shows. My weekly radio show, Peace Love Liberty Radio, is available on iHeartRadio. The Angel Clark Show is available on iHeartRadio. And Derek J's Peace News Now is available on iHeartRadio. The FPP Radio News, which is my daily five-minute newscast, has been submitted for iHeartRadio. I'm still awaiting the message of this has been approved, but I don't see any reason why it will not be. So people could pull up a, you know, a talk show stream, and I like this, and then it will suggest things that are similar. So it's a way to get the ideas of liberty out to a wider audience while still not going through the mainstream outlets to get it. So you're not going through Clear Channel or Comcast. Well, you might be using Comcast if they're your internet provider, but you know what I mean. You know, you're not going to the cable company and paying them large amounts of money to get your stuff out there. You're still using the alternative routes of here's another way you can get onto the highway. And if anybody has any questions, I will definitely answer. I think I've pretty much covered everything. Books, online, ebooks, newspaper, audio, video. Yes. Um, do you see like any merit or do you, like, like strategically speaking, um, what do you think is the best way to get out of the Liberty Networks and get into mainstream audiences as quickly as possible? Like, which one of these tools do you think reaches, like, the AM radio crowd or the NPR crowd or whatever? Uh, i say use all of the outlets that are available to you. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, obviously with cost in mind, because if you do have the Podomatic, which is more of the alternative sort of, you know, this is the podcast hosting for cheap people, you're not going to reach as many people as if you're paying for SoundCloud or if you're paying for Spreaker. Spreaker has some more expensive options available. Or if your show is accepted to iHeartRadio, then you get unlimited service for free. They give you free service. So I invested $39 to one of the upgraded plans on Spreaker just because I had a large amount of audio and I couldn't fit it all into the amount that they give you for the free account. So $39 submitted to iHeartRadio. 10 days later, I get notified your show has been approved. Here's your free plan. And that means everyone with an iPhone app can find it. Everybody with the smartphone app, be it iPhone, Android, Blackberry, whatever, 
anybody with the app, anybody browsing the iHeartRadio website could find the show. Uh -huh. So somewhat strategic use of keywords helps find a show. Like your name? So actually what I use for keywords on my newscast are free freedom news newscast radio. Because if somebody is looking for a radio newscast, what are they going to type in? Either radio news or radio newscast. Mm -hmm. So boom, there it is. With Peace, Love, Liberty Radio, I actually do use volunteerism, agorism, anarchism, libertarian, and freedom as the keywords. Because those are generally the things that I talk about. And they only give you five keywords on Spreaker. And Spreaker is the one that has connections to iHeartRadio. SoundCloud gives you up to 30 keywords, so you can use a lot more. You can put you know, talk, talk radio, news, New Hampshire. You could put Ron Paul, and that's what some people do, because you know anybody looking for Ron Paul would then find that particular show. I think that you know the whole let's put Ron Paul in everything, it's a bit overblown and seems like a cult of personality thing to me. And yes, I did support the guy in 08, didn't do it in 2012 because it became more about the man than the message. So strategic use of keywords definitely helps people, the wider audience, find your stuff. Does that answer the question? I think so. Yes? I was just wondering where you are located, like physically, in the world. Uh, right now I'm in room 206 of the right. Crown Plaza Hotel. In, uh, in general, though. Keene, New Hampshire. Oh, good. The Liberty Media Capital of the World. Are you aware of Transition Keene by any chance? Do you know that? I have never heard of Transition Keene. Okay. Well, there are... Uh, could, could you tell me more about this? Well, you know, my, my talk in, in, you know, at 11 is, is going to be about transition, so uh, I definitely want to talk about, you know, other, other groups that are doing a pretty good job, and Keen is, is definitely doing well. So, Any more questions? Am I in camera? <laughs> Somehow the camera has yeah, shifted. I don't think questions. I'm in shot. Yes? Um, so I, I'd like to hear more about CreateSpace. Does, does that... As a tool, does that or anything, any application like it provide any sort of like marketing or tagging tools the way radio does, or is it just sort of like the link exists on Amazon and now you've got to promote it? Uh, you do get a few keywords to use. Okay. Uh, and again, with Amazon, you know, Amazon by it by its very nature is probably the most mainstream outlet for books. Yeah. And it gives you the option. I, I've got it looped around the I see it. table there. Uh, it, it gives you the option to connect with bookstores, so that you could then go to Barnes and Noble or Books a Million. I would say Borders, but they closed down a couple of years ago. Uh, but any of the major bookstores, and a lot of even the smaller, more independent bookstores. You can ask for Davi Barker's Voluntary Islam. You could ask for Duopoly by Daryl Perry. You could ask for and the Anarcho Teachings of Daryl Perry. So or the Anarcho Teachings of Yeshua by Daryl Perry. And they can go into their system and say, We don't have this in stock, but we can order it for you. Okay. Print on demand stuff. It, it's print on demand, but as far as the actual shelf space in a bookstore, they're not going to give you that because the way the major publishers operate, and this is a little secret that they don't want people to know, they rent shelf space from the bookstores. And they do it in this weird, tricky way of, all right, Dobby, let's pretend for a second that you are Books A Million. Okay. And I am Simon & Schuster. Okay, yeah, it's a publisher? Ma yes, one of the largest publishers in the country. Okay, well they don't have very good brand recognition. That, <laughs> <laughs> that they use a lot of subsidiary, Pocket Books is okay. one of their subsidiaries, but they are like an envelope of a bunch of... So it's a publisher like Penguin or something? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So, all right, yeah. Penguin, you know Penguin. All right, so Mr. Books A Million, I'm Penguin Press, we've got this new... 
book here by unknown author uh, Jack Schmack, and we we want this book. Let me get a hundred copies. Uh -huh. All right, that's fine. And just remember, whatever copies you don't sell, we will always buy back from you at cost. Okay, so it's like commission. Bookstores are selling on commission. Kind of on commission. But in a sense, it's basically renting the space. So why wouldn't they give that deal to a small publisher? Like if 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 it's if I'm just paying to have it on the shelf. And because Penguin Press and Simon and Schuster and the other publishing companies, they have the funds to print up a hundred books for ten thousand stores, and then buy them all back if they don't sell. Mm. I don't have the funds to print 10,000 books to ship around to all these stores Got it. and then buy back when they don't sell. So it, it's that the, the, the investment cost is on the author. If you're the, the investment right cost is on the publisher. Right. Because the, the publishers, what they generally do, and this is something else that most people don't realize about mainstream publishers, the royalties that they offer are minuscule. Yeah. The husband of one of my cousins was given a $7,500 uh, forward on a book a couple of years ago. Meaning like, you know, oh, you've got the book, here's $7,500. Thank you for writing the book. And we will now give you 40 cents for each copy that sells. Okay. You know, 40 cents, that's minuscule. But if it's in Barnes & Noble and it's in, you know, that could add up. It could. The average author, and Davi, you've already surpassed this number oh. with Voluntary Islam. Okay. The average author only sells 15 to 75 copies of a book. Are you serious? Yes. Because, think about it, there are millions of books that are published every year. There are very few books that become bestsellers. Yeah. Very few books that get on the bestseller list of here's the top hundred books that were purchased last week. Do you have any sense of like whether like if, if big publishers have sort of homesteaded big bookstores, is there like room in the middle or are there middle to small local bookstores where it's easier to get on the shelves? A lot of these smaller local bookstores, especially if they're like a single bookstore such as Liberty Books in Concord, which unfortunately is going out of business in another couple of months. If you can actually go speak with the owner, then you can get the book on the shelf, generally either on commission or they will outright buy a handful of books from you. you know, I'll buy five copies of the book, put it on the shelf. Okay. And if you can sign the books, then they will slap a autograph by the author sticker on it. Sure. And then that brings a little bit more publicity. You know, it, it's eye catchy. You might even like advertise a book signing if it's local. You could do that. But you're not going to be able to do that with a chain. Even Toadstool, which Naomi Wolf was here last night. She was signing books. Toadstool Books was the one that had set her up with the thing. That's a larger of a company. It's still not, you know, one of these multi-state super bookstore outlets, but they have a handful of stores. That's going to be a little harder to get into just because chances are you're not going to speak directly to the owner when you go into a store. Okay. You know, if you go to Liberty Books, Jim, the guy that owns the place, is the guy working in the store. So a lot easier to get in there. I, I'm not. I, I heard you say it's not I hard. I got into Toadstool. It, it's not impossible. It could be done. It just takes some work just to actually up. speak okay. with the owner to get his permission, because most of the managers, in my experience, most of the managers will give you the runner. I can't make this decision. It's got to go through this guy. And then sometimes trying to get that information. Depending on how nice the manager is, you know, it might not be exactly easy to get the info. Okay. Any other questions? Seeing none, I will 
close the meeting slash presentation. Thank you all for coming out. And thank you, Daryl.